what's happening everyone so i don't know about you but where i'm at i'm in the uk things feel a little bit colder so i thought i would share two cozy comfort recipes with you this week the first being this gorgeous butternut squash and lentil soup the second being these salmon fish cakes which you are going to go crazy for you've got two very different weekday dinner ideas let me know in the comments which recipe you will be trying out first for more of my recipes more ideas more inspiration you can head over to my website at www.tishwonders.co.uk and go and check out all of my ebooks over there. So yeah, let's jump straight into this first recipe, this first cozy, warming, mm, nourishing recipe. Let's go, let's do it. So when I see a squash, any type of squash in the farmer's market, I know that soup season is upon us. So yeah, we're gonna kick off with this butternut squash and lentil soup. I am still gonna be incorporating some ingredients that are still available, like these gorgeous tomatoes. They look too good not to throw in the soup. And I actually love the combination of peppers, tomatoes, and butternut squash. I always do it, it works really well. We're gonna throw some coconut milk in there. I've also got so many gorgeous apples, so many varieties. Varieties. So I'm going to chop some up, throw that in the soup also. Believe me, it works. So yeah, like I said, this is going to be a butternut squash and lentil soup. So I've got some red lentils to keep with the whole orange theme. We're going to use some red lentils for this. So we're going to start off by chopping up all of our ingredients. There are a few ingredients, but honestly, you can just chop everything roughly because at the end, when the soup is cooked, we're just going to blitz everything anyways. So start off by roughly chopping up your onions. You can chop them into chunky pieces followed on by slicing some garlic. And then I like to grate my ginger. If you just wanna chop your ginger, you could also just chop it. But yeah, I just grated mine. So I usually just chop the end off the butternut squash and then just peel everything. I just find this way, it's a lot easier. And yeah, just chop my butternut squash into cubes, removing the seeds. So I followed on by slicing up the pepper, removing the seeds, and then just chopping it into large cubes. And I did the same with the tomatoes. I mean, if you want to remove the seeds from the tomatoes, you can. If you want to remove the skin, you can, but I just throw the tomato in whole. That's just how I like to do it. It's just easier that way. So I grabbed and heated a heavy base pan, probably on like a medium heat, swelled in a little bit of olive oil. You could, of course, use coconut oil. You could use ghee, whatever you want to use. And I threw in my onions and my garlic. Would have thrown the ginger in if I had remembered, but I actually forgot to throw the ginger in. You'll see I'll throw it in a little bit later. Um, yeah, just threw in some salt, some pepper, and I crushed some cumin seeds. Obviously, if you're using cumin powder, you don't have to do this step, but I just like to crush my seeds when possible. So yeah, just gave them a crush in my pestle and mortar. So this is the point that I remembered to throw in that grated ginger. And I also threw in some chili flakes, some oregano, and some coriander powder. So I let the onions sweat. I just cooked them down probably for about two to three minutes before throwing in the tomatoes and the peppers. Even at this point, your kitchen is going to be smelling beautiful. Everything's gonna be smelling so good. Um, yeah, you can go ahead and just prep the other ingredients. So you can give your lentils a really good wash. Just wash them until the water runs clear. So I just need to put my stock in. Sometimes I use bone broth. Today, I've just got a little stock cube. I'm just gonna mix it with some hot water. So when it comes to the water that I use in my kitchen, I do not mess around. I do not play, whether that be for drinking or for cooking, I am super particular. This leads me to this week's sponsor, which is Water Drop. If you're familiar with my channel, then you already know that I am a huge advocate of the Water Drop filters. This is the Water Drop Core Reverse Osmosis Countertop Filter. It fits beautifully in my kitchen and it takes up minimal space. It alleviates the fuss of a traditional understage reverse osmosis. It is compact to fit every countertop and its lightweight design means that it can be easily transported from room to room. I know that's gonna be a big thing for a lot of you. The setup is super quick and easy. It probably takes about 20 minutes. So you simply install the filter, feed the water tank and flush the filter following the instructions in the manual. You'll quickly be provided with safe drinking water that reduces up to 99.9% .9 of impurities. The water drop countertop reverse osmosis comes with a five stage reverse osmosis filtration, reducing impurities such as TDS, PFO, PFOSs, chlorine, and more. So you can have hot water in three seconds. I feel like this is one of my favorite features about this filter. Perfect to make my little cup of tea. You can actually choose from five water temperatures and volumes. This is especially helpful for all the different cooking requirements that I have. I may need different water temperatures and varied measurements. So yeah, this feature. Yeah, it's perfect for me. The intelligent smart touch display saves your preferences for temperatures. It also displays the filter life. Speaking of 
the Filter Life. The filter has a three to one pure to drain ratio, meaning dispensing three cups of pure water produces only one cup of wastewater. If you consider how much money you spend on bottled water, using the Water Drop Core Reverse Osmosis Countertop is going to be way more cost effective without a doubt. If this water drop filter sounds like something you're interested in, you are getting prepared for cozy season. You can actually save up to 40% during the prime full sale. So whether it's clean crisp water that you want for your full recipes, you are wanting safe, clean water for you and your family, water drop has you covered. You can check out all of the links in the description box below. Thank you once again to water drop for sponsoring today's video. Let's jump back into the recipe. So yeah, I used my water to drop to get some hot water so I could just dissolve the stock cube. So yeah, I threw in the butternut squash along with the rinsed red lentils. I then poured in all of that vegetable stock. I didn't get it on camera, but I also threw in one chopped apple as well. So I just reduced the heat and I covered the pot. I let everything cook for about Mm, 25 minutes or so you'll know when the soup's ready once the butternut squash is nice and tender and you can just slice the knife through it just like this second to last step we're going to pour in the coconut milk and then we're just going to blitz everything if you want an alternative to coconut milk of course you could use regular cream you could use oat cream um yeah i'm sure i'm sure there are many other alternatives to coconut milk uh, i just personally love the taste and yeah i like doing it right at the end once the soup is cooked so yeah let's just pour this in oh yeah so this is my favorite part i love pouring in the coconut milk. So go ahead and pour in the coconut milk or any other creamy alternative that you are choosing to use. You can just give everything a good mix. You can give it a taste, make sure that everything is on point for you, make sure all the salt's good, make sure the pepper's good. That's perfect. That's good for me. So sometimes I'll throw it in my high speed blender, but honestly having a hand Blender is just so much easier. Oh, I just love this thing. So you can blitz the soup so you have like a textured soup. Some days I like a smooth soup. Some days I like a textured soup. Just depends what kind of mood I'm in. But I was in a smooth soup type of mood today. So yeah, just went ahead and served up this butternut squash and lentil soup. So I topped my soup with some crispy beluga lentils. I showed you how I did these crispy lentils in the last video, so you can go and check that out after you watch this video. And I also had a jammy egg as well. Some parsley, some black pepper, a little swirl of olive oil. I know this is just a lentil and butternut squash soup, but listen, this thing had me lost for words, especially the next day. Oh my God, it tasted even better. I filled my flask up with it, took it on the go, took it for my lunch. It was mm, everything that I wanted on a rainy autumn day. Putting more of those crispy lentils on. So we're gonna make these spicy salmon, you could call them fish cakes, you could call them patties. You can call them whatever you want, but just know that they are going to be devoured in your kitchen. Everyone is gonna love them. Anyone and everyone who tries them, guaranteed they will fall in love. I'm gonna serve these fish cakes with some rice. Obviously, you can serve them with whatever you want. So we'll be needing some salmon. If you want to buy your salmon without the skin, that's fine. Otherwise, it's really simple to remove with a sharp knife. But obviously, if you don't wanna do that step, just get some skinless salmon. We will be needing some chili, some lemongrass, and some ginger. So we'll be adding in some miso. I love this miso right here. Some fish sauce and some soy sauce or tamari. I'm going to pack these with fresh coriander because I love coriander so much, but if coriander cilantro is not your thing, you can you can leave it out. So even though we're gonna blitz the salmon burgers, you wanna have everything either finely chopped or grated. So we are going to finely, finely grate this ginger. So we'll also be grating lots of that lemongrass. I love some lemongrass, so yeah, I grated quite a bit. And finally, finally chopping up that chili. Just be cautious if that chili is spicy and you know that it's gonna be a spicy chili, just add a little bit in. Don't, don't go overboard with it. And then finally, finally chop up that fresh coriander. So grabbing a food processor, I actually just chopped my salmon into cubes. So I placed in the salmon, followed on by that fresh coriander. Then the ginger, lemongrass and chili went in. I gave it some good salt. You want a good bit of salt um, and some soy sauce as well, some tamari. Followed on by adding in a touch of miso along with that fish sauce. I didn't mention, but we're gonna add some lime zest in as well, preferably from a unwaxed lime, if that is available.
So I probably overpulsed mine a little bit, to be honest, and I wasn't adding any breadcrumbs into this. So it was a bit risky, uh, but they still worked. So I just shaped these salmon fish cakes, these salmon patties, and I was able to make four out of the mixture that I had. So I put these in the fridge just for about 15 minutes, just so that they will set. Uh, and it just gave me time to kind of clear my kitchen and also put my rice on to cook. Um, so yeah, just gave my rice a wash and then filled it using my water drop filter with some clean water and yeah, put my rice to cook, add a little bit of coconut milk and some salt in there too. I also thought it would be really nice to have something on the side, something a little crunchy and I had some carrots in the fridge. So I just ribboned my carrots, threw them into a bowl, placed over some rice myron, some tamari, some sesame seeds, and some olive oil. Me being my extra self, I thought, mm, a little spicy almond butter dressing would be nice for this. I love a good almond butter dressing. So yeah, I just whipped that up in about a minute. So almond butter, some lime juice, a touch of maple syrup, some chili, some tamari, and a touch of water just to kind of whisk everything. So I heated a pan and I threw a little bit of oil in there and just cooked these salmon fish cakes, these salmon patties, they cook super, super quick, three, three and a half minutes on each side. You'll know once they are cooked, um, but yeah, really simple to cook these. They come together just, yeah, in a few minutes. This is such a delicious dinner. I mean, I love salmon. Anyway, salmon's cooked, I'm gonna love it, but there's just something special. You know, if you just wanna switch things up, this is like a great recipe to try. Like I mentioned, you can pair these with anything, anything that you would enjoy. I just think the combination of the rice with a little crunchy carrot salad and that spicy almond butter dressing is just mm, perfect for me. So yeah, two cozy, nourishing recipes for you to take into your week. Let me know which recipe you'll be trying out first in the comments. I would love, love, love to hear from you. Remember to click the link in my description to check out more from Waterdrop. I will see you all in my next video very, very soon. I think next week, okay? See you all soon, bye.